they won't have the problems that uh, that airlines that are being supplied by Boeing will have, and they'll look to put as much capacity in the marketplace to take advantage of the fact that the airlines that are flying Boeing product aren't able to get all of the the flying done that they want to do. Um, you know, the truth too here is I think that um, you know the Boeing challenges will provide a little bit of firmness to the marketplace, but I still see a, I think a U.S. airline market that looks like it's got a, a, a uh, has plenty of capacity in it, and I still think fares are flattish to maybe going down uh, for the year unless Boeing really curtails uh, their deliveries for the year. Yeah, it's interesting because if I read this issue about Boeing and I read this cut in capacity, but my first thought is going to be that that means higher prices for consumers. So what accounts for the difference there? Well, first of all, I think the U.S. market already had sufficient capacity last year, right? I think we're, we're bouncing back from a pandemic. Uh, we saw a bunch of sort of re revenge travel, you know, earlier in this, in this bounce back. I, I don't, and that was very leisure driven. I don't think we're going to see as much of the leisure driven travel this year, not the, I got to pay whatever it's going to take mm -hmm. to get down to Disney. So you'll see it maybe a small, um, a smaller growth amount in leisure and business isn't fully back. We, we know that. So we've got 2019, more than 2019 levels of capacity in the marketplace, less business, and maybe a little more leisure. So when I add that all up, again, I kind of see a market that looks like it's got plenty of capacity. If you look at the guidance that Southwest gave on revenue per available seat mile, mm -hmm. uh, they lowered that at, at this discussion. Um, so it tells me that the market is weaker you know, at this guidance point. The market is weaker than they initially thought. And at the same time, fuel prices were a little bit higher. So what it looks like to me is Southwest numbers are going to come in lighter than we expected in one Q. Uh, that, that's not a super healthy market. That's not a market that's uh, got so much constraint that they can price whatever they want to for airline tickets and make lots of profits. Okay, so it's like a it's like a trifecta. Like they do have a specific Boeing issue in the fuel prices and then the broader softer market. That's a general airline issue. United also yeah. told Boeing to stop building 737 MAX 10 yeah. jets for the carrier. Yeah. That sounds dramatic and bad. What does that actually mean? You know, I think it sounds like uh, Scott Kirby, the CEO of United, is just getting real about what he thinks Boeing can deliver in the near term. I, I guess, you know, if you sit around and you kind of hope and hope and hope they're going to get the MAX 10 certified, uh, and you wait on those deliveries based on that hope, and the certification keeps getting pushed out, and you, it's really hard to plan. So Scott Kirby said, hey, look, stop worrying about the Dash 10. Just bring me Dash 9. He was saying, look, I just want airplanes. Bring me airplanes. I think the market's generally going to be strong for me. He's in the premium segment too, right? Which I think from the guidance we saw today from airlines, premium is holding up better. So he wants airplanes. He wants to go out and find some of those 321 larger scale from Airbus. Uh, again, I, th I, think it's, I think it's okay. I think Scott's being a realist. There's a lot of challenges right now at Boeing, and it feels to me like certification for the Dash 7 and the Dash 10, the, you know, the Dash 10 being the biggest variant of the 737, th there's just almost no way they're going to get pushed out longer than when we expect, given the problems in manufacturing at Boeing right now. And what is that? So is there any read across that we should start thinking about for Airbus? Well, well I mean... <laughs> Here's the challenge of this industry, right? The read across is, look, Airbus ought to be able to go get a lot more orders for its Airbus A321. But the problem Scott has, and he's a really good customer, and they're working hard to find him slots, is that they probably can't get him 321s for four or five years from now. Wow. So that doesn't fix his near-term problems. And customers that would be smaller than United have an even larger problem because Airbus isn't going to work as hard to try to get him into the into the delivery cadence. Hmm. The, the industry is, is operating at sort of max capacity now. It's pushing its supply chains to do better, but we just don't see increases of you know, build rates kind of more than 10-ish percent per year at best. It's really hard to bring up that supply chain. Mm -hmm. So I think the duopoly means that Airbus can't really capitalize that well on this. Um, just anecdotally, I flew to Houston for like a day last week, and I flew there on a new Boeing jet for United and back on an old one. And man, that was different. That was a very different experience. Did you bring a wrench yeah. with you? Uh, okay, Ooh. I did text my husband, and I was like, hey, so I'm on this Boeing plane just in case something happens. Um, 
What is, I know, I'm like that. Uh, what is the floor, though, George, for Boeing? I mean, the stock is literally dropping like a knife here. Um, are we looking at the October low is what we have to be watching? Like, where's the support and where is the support going to actually come from? So, look, it's, you know, Boeing has been through some real troubles and uh, the bad news sort of keeps coming. Um, look, look I, it's hard to say what a price would be on that floor. I will say that I think their purchase of spirit that they've proposed um, could start to put a floor underneath their problems. I see that direct line of, of management from the Spirit floor in Wichita, Kansas, all the way up to Boeing and Renton, Washington, as being the ultimate solution to improving quality, um, you know, oversight. So I, I think we have to watch that development closely. It's going to require getting some of the Airbus business outside of Spirit because Spirit builds products for the um, A320 for Airbus and the A350. I don't think you want that inside Boeing. Uh, so this is going to be a complicated procedure, a complicated uh, purchase. But I think that's the beginning of Boeing really getting to stabilize their builds, improve quality, and get and and that's going to make the FAA free F, up FAA time and open the FAA's mind up about certifying Max 7 and 10. Uh, so I think that that's the beginning of it.